what is going on ladies and gents my name is malcolm also known as beta and today i'm here to bring you all a complete gameplay walkthrough of the witcher 3 wall hunt next gen update blood and one expansion game they walk through oh jesus christ it's such a mouthful but basically i'm finishing up my witcher 3 playthrough of the next gen update uh earlier this year in january we finished up the ba main base game of witcher 3 wall hunt and last week or no about like a week and a half ago two weeks ago uh we finished up witcher 3 hearts of stone next gen update now we are wrapping up the entirety of witcher 3 with the witcher 3 blood and wine and i cannot wait to replay this uh for you all today so forget all Awesome. The vampire theme. I've said this before, I'll say it again. There needs to be more vampires in video games, and we're getting that with Redfall in a few months. So, yeah, cannot wait for that. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, before we get started with this walkthrough, ladies and gents, if you guys could please leave a like on this video, if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe for more content that helps me up this channel a lot. Also, when you do subscribe, make sure you hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any content I post to this channel. Uh, please share my channel and my videos to all your friends, families, cats and dogs, and whoever who not. And you guys can all follow me on Twitter at Beta, B-A-Y-T-U-H. If you want to keep supporting me even further than just subscribing to my YouTube channel, leaving a like, share my channel and my videos to all your friends and families please consider donating some of your extra monies you have lying around to my patreon and or paypal and or through youtube super thanks and or through my other ways you could donate to me which is through uh youtube becoming a youtube membership and leave a tip all those in are all of those are in the description down below but for patreon it's patreon.com slash beta b-a-y-t-u-h and or paypal.me slash beta b-a-y-t-u-h and or through youtube super thanks all you have to do is click on any one of my videos that are monetized which is 99.9 percent of them then hit that little money heart thanks button donate however much you want any and all donations ladies and gentlemen much appreciated and is 100 percent completely optional and with all that being said ladies and gents without further ado let's get started okay what is up what is up what is up envoys and wine boys I keep forgetting we're on PS5, so it's like everything's loading. Everything is like loading like super quickly now. It's like, oh man, it feels so freaking good being on next gen. But any all who. Um, let's go over here. Sir Gelt of Rivia. That milf guardian emperor can kiss my ass. I really wish they um, they played the full version of the Austin Fern song because it does have lyrics in it. It's a beautiful voice. I have no idea who the woman who does the voice for it, but it's very beautiful. I love it. And look at there, I got 51,000 or 50,000 50, gold. Wait, did I have 51,000? I thought I had 51,000. Oh, it doesn't matter. You guys have watched my calling, so I gotta get all the upgrades for the Corvo Bianco. It won't be as cocky once the Baron's men whip your arse. Geralt of Rivia. Ha! Sit with us, Witcher. Found your message on a notice board. You see, Palmerin? I told you. The griffin at White Orchard. I knew that were we only to follow the tracks of its slayer, we would in the end find Geralt. Milton de Peyrac Perrin and Palmerin de Lonfor. Good to see you both. Been years. In short, we share your joy. You must forgive us our uh, surroundings. When we pledged to place the village under our protection, the village elder gave us this hut as our lodgings. He swore it is the best hut in the village. Get involved in some squabble? We discovered that in retreating, the Redanian garrison that left this land's tillers at the mercy of numerous plagues. A tyranny of bandits, the most onerous among them. These planterers shall soon descend on this village to collect tribute. Milton and I will dissuade them. We are both sworn to fight injustice and oppression wherever they rear their heads. The matter does not concern you, of course, but 
Do us the kindness of waiting. Once we have dealt with these marauders, we have a matter we must present to you. So, plan to go out and meet the bandits when they arrive? Fight them? Parmaron wishes first to appeal to their sense of decency. <laughs> but I expect they will be deaf to this. Yeah, completely. We must afford them a chance to stand down. Many a hardened outlaw has left the path of wrongdoing upon hearing words of admonition. Doesn't happen in these lands. Ever. If they do not heed my reprimand, we at least will know we have done all within our means to evade bloodshed. Fine. Naturally, I'll help when Palmerin's rhetoric falls on deaf ears. Excellent. Then we've but to wait for the rogues to arrive. They are coming! Hear that? Your bandits have arrived. Let us go out to greet them. <laughs> he mean us? I, Palmerin de Lonfall, call upon you to repent. Search your hearts. Do you not see that they are blackened? <laughs> Regular punch and duty here. To prey upon commoners is no honor. To loot their meager stores, abandon the path of shame, and we will spare you. <laughs> Right, good jest, that. Had us a laugh. Now, fuck off or we lose our patience and you lose something else. Nay, <laughs> wait, Zorg. These lads are a lark. Mayhaps they know some tricks. Oi, players! Can you toss balls all loopity like Or do that thing where one spits fire while the other farts? <laughs> Noble Palmerin's giving you a chance. Now I'm gonna give you some advice. Do what he says. Or what? Or you'll find yourself fighting knights errant in the pay of the Duchess of Toussaint. And they eat scum like you with their morning porridge. Well, there's three of them. Two turtled up in armor. We'll come back later. Some wench sent them. Folk who say we's a feared of wenches and jesters. Ooh, insulted the Duchess. Not good. Indeed, we cannot let the affront go unpunished. I swear upon the Heron you will pay with your own blood. By the crane, villains, ready your arms. For Toussaint! There's a lot more freaking whatchamacallits than I thought. Pathetic. Come on, you asshole. Hang on, let me handle this asshole. For the glory of the great Kuzo! Fuck! 
Why do they not emerge? It is over. We have banished the Scantrus, lifted oppression's yoke from their lives. Warned you it'd be like this. Fear you as much as they did the bandits now. Sorry, no fanfares and flowers. You're not in Toussaint. Ugh, it is true what folk claim. In the North, no noble deed goes unthwarted. It is time to go home. And we shall, my friend. Come, Geralt. It's time we delivered our message. So fess up. What brings you such a long way? We are to deliver Her Grace the Duchess's message in full, with all due ceremony. For tradition... Is sacred in Toussaint. All right, fine. Most honorable Geralt, slayer of monsters and all Ifels nefarious, which prey on the defenseless of this world. Whereas never have you been known to deny help to the innocent, nor leave widows and orphans to fates undeserved. Answer you now our present summons. Free us from the beast which floods our streets with blood and sows panic in the hearts of rich and poor alike. Come to our aid, Witcher. Thus humbly beseeches you the Star-Cross City's most gracious protectress, her illustrious highness, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Shall you answer her call? Anna Henrietta really say all that, word for word? Well, in point of fact, she said, bring me the Witcher and dare not spare your horses. Only make certain this time he comes alone. The Ducal Chamberlain added the rest. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I might add, be it unofficially, that a hefty reward awaits. Yet the specifics you will need to verify with her illustrious highness. Might be the most fervent request that I take a contract ever. And the most polite. And now we've got all that behind us. I want to hear more about this beast. Some kind of monster? Just guessing. Most assuredly, though no one has caught a good look at it as yet, our only sure witnesses, the bodies massacred in a brutal, horrid manner. Look, some sketches drafted from descriptions given by those who claim they glimpsed the beast. Each quite different. To my mind, these witnesses lie. How many victims so far? Two. When Her Grace learnt of the second, she discharged us immediately to fetch you, promising grants of land and fortunes in gold, should you answer her summons. An ill wind blows, Geralt. The beast cannot be tracked. Folks say it wields black magic. Also, both victims were nobly born, and the start of a tourney draws near. Beast wields black magic? What makes you say so? The first victim vanished between bites at a feast. Of the feast goers, none noticed this. They saw but an open window, then heard desperate cries from the street below, where a corpse had just been found. The second killing, similar. A knight in a locked room. Serpents all about the house, guards all around the estate. Yet the beast somehow got him out, dragged him to the town square, and killed him there. No one saw, nor hurt, a thing. We have no fear of creatures against which sword and shield protect. But of this beast, nothing is known. Safe that it cannot be traced, kills effortlessly, and with no rhyme or reason we can discern. Anyone tried to hunt it? Knights Errant, for example? Ha! Many have tried. Baiting, waiting in ambush, but to no avail. The beast is clever. It evades all traps and attacks of a sudden. It is like a ghost. An experienced tracker, this is what we need, with knowledge of monsters. In short, we need you. Mentioned a tourney. Why doesn't the Duchess just call it off? Simply, it is too late. The guests have arrived. The best knights of all lands, relatives of the Emperor. The beast could be a threat to others, not just to her grace's subjects. Got it. Before an aristocrat dies, at best it's a scandal. At worst, a diplomatic incident. Uh, I sometimes think back to all the contracts I've ever taken from sovereigns. Can't name hardly any where I came out ahead. 
You cannot be thinking to refuse. <sighs> no. Just struck by a thought. How the Duchess can sometimes be... Hmm, demanding. So you accept the contract? Excellent! We must set off at once. We long wanted this land searching for you. Yet time is of the essence. Ready to go, soon as you're packed. Ha! Ah, then post haste to Toussaint. To Toussaint! Exactly how I remembered it. You will find Beauclair has changed some these past years. Walk about when you have the chance. You will see for yourself. To me, place always seemed straight out of a fairy tale. Knights errant, elven palaces. You insinuate that we are somehow odd? I shall prove you wrong. This I pledge on the Heron! Why is he coming for me? When is the best? Love born of wisdom, Witcher. So, Guillaume, out with it. Which fair damsel inspired you to vow to kill that filth? The most beautiful among them. If he wishes to guard her name a secret, he need not reveal it. You I do not know, sir, nor seem you a knight, yet still I am profoundly grateful, nay, indebted to you for your succor. This trophy, sir, is yours. A giant this close to human settlements? Strange. Well, that was no ordinary giant. His name was Goliath. Rumored to have been a knight once, but one who broke his vows. For this, the Lady of the Lake transformed him into a wild giant and banished him into the Gorgon Hills. So he came back down? Why? Several times each year, hunger chased him into the lowlands. Goliath had killed and devoured many shepherds. Guillaume's hunt served a noble cause. At any rate, it's a tale for more agreeable environs. I'll take the trophy. Why not? Could find someone who'll pay to buy it. 
Put up a good fight against the giant. Got experience battling monsters? None. In Tucson, we mostly chase bandits. But I vowed I'd bring my heart's champion the head of a monstrosity, as the famed Gottfried, known as the Giant Killer, did. You don't mean to hunt the beast, I hope. The matter's best left to Geralt. Another challenge awaits me. Yet if Geralt is to hunt the beast, he ought to know. It struck again. The river surrendered a corpse. It washed up in the meander by the cockatrice. Damien Delatour's guardsmen are there already, securing the area. Securing the area? Better go there now before they trample any tracks, manhandle any evidence. Set forth, then. I shall ride for the city to inform her gracious magnificence that Geralt has arrived. We'll meet later, near Guillaume's tent at the Tourney grounds. I shall take you then to see her grace. Ooh, a greater red mutagen, mutagen, which doesn't matter in this case, right? Hang on. How many fucking things do I need for this? Two greater mutagens, three greater blutes, which we have a lot of blue mutagens that we could just combine, so that's not the problem. So that's not a big issue. Because I want to unlock these other two um, um, things right here. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Hey, hi, how you doing? Okay, let's reapply that freaking whatchamacallit oil, that vampire oil. I forgot like what oil is used against Cyclopses. I think it's like they're like relics or something like that. Relics sound about right. All right, shall we? Brave kid, Guillaume. Parmarin oversaw his upbringing. Guillaume is his kid. Guillaume de la Cruz. Guillaume. Head to the pheasantry. The yeah, I watch uh, what we do in the shadows. Wait for season four, I think. Or five. Four. I can't get used to the way you knights talk. Especially how you switch back and forth between flowery and, well, near normal. We are knights errant in the service of her gracious magnificence. When we appear in her name or speak on her behalf, we are bound by tradition. Not everyone can talk all fancy like Triss or Yennefer. I'm here. They must have removed the body already. Let's look around. Make sure they didn't miss anything. Hobnailed boots. Multiple sets of prints. Ducal guard, clearly. Let's see where they went. Walked along the shoreline. Perhaps the body lay on the bank. Uh, give me a second. Uh... The door door day. Oh, got guests. Careful. Perish on us, loops. What are these things? Are, are these new? by the smell of blood let's keep looking are those new i honestly do not remember them from from you know where i originally played this dlc i mean they're rock fiends i mean they're basically rock fiends they're just spiky rock fiends Any 
Anything taken by the current ends up in these shallows. Yes, the stench is fierce. Poor taut hair. Only blood-soaked scraps left of the victim's clothing. Good quality cloth. A wealthy victim, correct? Looks it. And a bullfrog, hey. Sorry. Blood. Guardsmen pulled these nets out of the water, then cut the mutilated body free. Gerald didn't say his famous blood. Monster blood. Look, a boat was launched here. Guardsmen must have loaded the body parts onto it, taken them somewhere. Need to find out where. I'd like to look at the corpse before it starts to decompose. The inn. Its patrons must have seen the guardsmen, which direction they took. We should ask there. Seems we've got ourselves an audience. You think this surprising? The locals will tell the children of children they do not have yet. Of the day a quartered corpse was pulled from the river. Is that a good thing? That doesn't sound like a good thing. One thing. Found a handkerchief in the water. Monogrammed DLC. Mean anything to you? Delacroix? It cannot be. Was it he the beast slew? Seems so. Knew him well? Long past. We were close friends once, but our paths diverged. He was a man of extremes. Standing by his companions, no matter the odds. Fighting his foes to the bitter end. Foes? You have a lot of them? He did. But I do not see what that has to do with the beast. Ah, Geralt. You've struck a raw nerve. Memories of a time long past. To which I'd rather not return now. I understand. We can talk later. Let's go to the tavern. I shall have to leave you soon. Return to court. Barely got back to Tucson. A knight in the service of her illustrious highness knows no rest. In fact, I feared I would return too late to fulfill my duty. Yet it seems I've arrived in the nick of time. Are we taking our horses or no? Roach, you do you be buddies with uh Milton not Milton. Examining the corpse. Be sure to report to Anarietta. Anarietta? Her Grace, the Duchess. I forget myself at times. We address each other by our first names in private. Never in Palmrin's presence, however. He finds such familiarity offensive. Dude does seem really uptight. If I'm not mistaken, we could use delusions on someone up here. I think. I'm not 100% certain. I think. So we're just going to switch where is the delusions here. A watering hole for traders, smugglers, boatmen. But you will find no better crayfish chowder in all Toussaint. In the north, what about redfish chowder? By my troth, could that be the musty scent of fresh pate? Naught else, Sir de Peyrac Peyron. I see time has not dulled your senses. We would be honored if you would join us. Uh, your companion as well. But why do I not detect even a whiff of crayfish chowder? No soup today, on account of there being no crayfish. I reckon you've not heard, but all I caught was a corpse. I awoke at the crack of dawn, as I do each day, but when I looked up, I beheld a blood-red sky. This corpse is precisely why we're here. For the man whom you've invited to join you at the table was summoned from a far-off land by her gracious magnificence. He is tasked with tracking and killing the beast. We invited two men to join us, yet since Sir de Peyrac Peyron in temperament is more akin to hare than hound, I surmise the other is the hunter. With whom do we have the pleasure? 
Name's Geralt. A humble introduction. You've clearly not tarried long with Sir de Peyrac Peyron. Spare us the petty insults. Geralt is a master of the witchering trade. He has questions concerning the beast's last victim. I was the one to find the corpse. The sun had just risen when I awoke, sat straight up in my bed, looked out the window, and beheld a sky red as blood. Ask Geralt, please, or we shall be here till winter. Must have been early in the morning. Went to check your nets and then... I stepped out of my hut and saw... By my troth, to the point, man. You found a body ensnared in your crayfish nets. We know this already. What happened then? Did you see anyone nearby? Did you spy anything noteworthy? Anything at all? Not a soul around, just me. As for noteworthy... Hmm, well... What did you see? But be warned. If I hear the sky was red again... I saw... A head bobbing, eyes bulging, the tongue blew and popped out. Next to it, a hand rocking upon the water. Get a good look at the body parts? They gave me such a fright! I bolted to town, fast as my legs would take me, then returned with guardsmen who told me to keep out of their way. They had a hard haul. The parts were so tangled up in my nets, they were forced to cut them. Need to examine the body. Know where they took it? They ferried it across, then loaded it on a cart and hauled it to a cellar at Corfo Bianco to keep it cool, see? What? Why, Corfo Bianco is Baron Russell's estate. When he learns they've turned his cellar into a morgue, he'll set his hounds on them. While you were caliphanting about the north, his vineyard was auctioned off. Who was that? Woman who just left. Didn't see her before. Didn't notice her walk in, either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeep's daughter. But hold, Geralt, because this is an outrage. Rossell's vineyard was auctioned off? Inconceivable! It is no secret the Baron had gambling debts up to his ears. It finally came time to collect. His creditors auctioned off his property. The Ducal Chancellery bought it, in fact. Russell now bunks with his brother in Vicar Faro. I told Russell he'd get his comeuppance. How long can one draw on past heroics? His creditors must finally have to find that his promises meant nothing. Such are the times. Today's knights are pale shadows of the heroes of yore. It's true what they say. God sent the beast to punish us for straying from the old paths. So folk think the beast's divine punishment. Knights have turned their backs on the old customs. Where they were defenders of the Dachi, they're now defenders of their own tushes. Why, you insolent. Let him talk. The Duchess trades in titles, grants honors to ill to us. We've strayed from the path of virtue, lost the gods' favor, so the gods sent retribution. Don't listen to that nonsense, Geralt. It's rehashed street preacher Codsworth. Yes, the rebel rousers have been sprouting up like weeds lately, each offering the same bill of goods. They say anything else about the beast, besides it being a messenger of the gods? The two Saintois are no fools. They see clearly the beast kills on days honoring patron saints. Picky monster. Thanks for the hospitality. Time I examined the corpse. Corvo Bianco lies a short way from here, near the tourney grounds. Just follow the road and you'll arrive. Not coming with? Oh yeah, duty of some sort calls. Some sort? <laughs> Her grace bestowed a great honor on me. Even before we departed for Venet. I'm to play the hare during this year's game in the palace gardens. When you see me in my costume, you will wet yourself laughing. A little tempted to ask a few questions, but it sounds like a long, complicated story. One involving lengthy digressions into local history and tradition. So, see you later, Milton, and good luck. Rather have that chowder. Oh dear, I should be off. Oh, you must have your pick. 
Well, I guess I was wrong about the needed delusions. I thought, huh? Then I was thinking about something else. Uh, well, let's go back and equip this. I get that right. Hopefully. I hate having to like, adjust my mic. I need to buy myself a sure SM7B. So it's like in just like one angle. I'm using the Elgato Wave 3, which is really good. Don't get me wrong. But like microphones with like the large frame. Like always like mess me up. I'm like, where like should I put my head up a little bit more or my head down a little bit more? But <coughs> Am I wanted? Ducal clerks looking for help. Would be good coin to be made. some of these side we will do we're gonna do the um not the knife for hire but like the ones that lead to the um run roach the whatchamacallit the to get erudite we're gonna do that it's some of the main side quests the other side quests not really since it's like a lot of it is repetitive. Definitely the wine wars one. Fight. Have to hurry. Uh -oh. Damn it! Killer must still be here. Why do this? This is gonna be my new home soon. What's this called? Why did I do that? I'm an idiot. Wait, did I use like the big attack one? <laughs> Fucking idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Press the wrong button. I just wanted to see what the freaking thing looked like. Throat torn open by man like jaws. Man like. Except for long fangs. Killed with a single blow. In the cellar, gotta be. Attacker had no trouble knocking over the cart. Rivermuck carried the body in his cart. Claw wounds. Five separate claws, spread of a small human hand, massacred by a vampire. Not an Ekimara, though, or a Fletter, Bruxa, gotta be. Bruxa. Let's see, moon dust, vampire oil, black blood, urban. Um, since there are a lot of vampires in this, we should do. Yeah, let's switch that to Moon Dust. There. And we'll use Black Blood when the fight uh, when the Black fight starts. Blood and Moon Dust could be lifesavers. Footprints, small bare feet, lead deeper into the cellar. Fell down the stairs, broke his neck. Yeah, we'll use uh, black blood when the fight starts. Hurled against the wall with great force. Took a lot of strength to batter this down. Used this to batter down the grate. You 
saw you at the inn. I know what you are. Don't know why you killed these people, though. Clearly wasn't for their blood. don't have to fight. You are wrong. I cannot let you leave. Cat. Didn't even get hit because I'm a freaking baller. Uh, stinks. Waterlogged, both hands amputated. Body was quartered just as I thought. Laid in water for some time. Head swollen, and something took a few bites out of it. Hmm. Something in the throat. A pouch bulging with coins. Elf guardian florins from several different provinces. If the murderer did this, means we're dealing with a sentient thinking beast. Body was chopped up after death. Blows struck with great force. But bones sliced through, not crushed. Creature that killed him had long claws, sharp as a witcher's blade. First sank its claws into the victim's heart. No Bruxa did this. Third hand. A spare? Except it's clearly not the victim's. Guardsmen must have not noticed it as they picked everything up. How's this possible? Still warm. Blood still flowing. Several monster species can regenerate. Never heard of that happening to their severed limbs, though. Or of their limbs seeming completely alive after so much time. Examine the tissue more closely later. Might learn something. So, murderer was clearly a monster, but not a Bruxa. But then why'd the Bruxa come here for the severed hand? And who does the hand belong to? Why the hell's it still warm? Now... Out shoved down the victim's throat. What's the significance? And why was he chopped up into pieces? Lots of questions. No answers so far. Need to know about the other victims. I'll ask Palmerin to get me in to see the Duchess. Busy messing up the place that's going to be my home. Forty thousand gold. Uh, let's do that. But I have two. Because of what you call it. So we're gonna be fighting Deadlove. 
We're gonna be needing some more moon uh, moon dust. Which I didn't know I only have three of them. But what the? Oh. Well, four of them. Roach, get up. How about the turning grounds were like to my right? Where the hell are they? But they're rain. Oh god. God, I had the y'all. I had like the biggest debate with my with my family a few days ago over like. Which way is the right way, or which way is left, and all that crap? Oh, God. It was silly. I don't feel like rehashing it. Because it's just gonna get me upset again. I was right. I was in the right. Because my dog, my husky, Junior, Come on. he was sitting in the back right. And my mom was like, well, technically, he's to my left. And my older brother's like, well, technically, you could have just said, like, behind. I'm like, dude. Dude, you should be on my side. Dude, come on now. Giant edged forth the wall so hard. Shook all the bell. Need to speak to the Duchess urgently. All right, you scamps. Story's done. Go find your parents. But the Pomerim. What about the story of Ritik and the dragon? A tales for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia, the master witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Goliath. Master Witcher, is it true virtue always trumps villainy? Not always. Could go either way. Sometimes virtue wins, sometimes villainy gets the upper hand. Still worth being good. But why? If it doesn't mean you'll win. Palmer and Story, think back. A decent man attracts other good folk, makes friends he can count on. A rogue? Well, he can only count on other rogues. And who would you rather have for a friend? A man of virtue? I must agree. Now, that will do for questions. Go find your parents. Her enlightened highness has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch the battle in the arena. If we hurry, we'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Who's fighting? Elf Guardian gladiators? Close, but not quite. As you will soon see. Someone's gonna fight a Shalmar? Even some elves on its tail to confuse it, slow it down? Whatever is the problem? The beast is a gift from the Emperor, no less. This is dangerous. Bells on its tail aren't enough. I saw a spectacle of the sort of Yorina and Nunez. There, a nice piece of the Shelma with bells on its tail. Might have gotten lucky. Shelma might have been lame. Who knows? Only a Witcher has a real chance against a healthy Shelma. And that's not even every Witcher. Besides which, releasing a monster that dangerous in front of a crowd? Plain irresponsible. Who's going to fight the beast? Guillaume, the young man you met. Yeah. Mentioned he promised his heart's capture a monster trophy. Great love demands great sacrifices. Let's go.
I dedicate my imminent victory to fair lady Vivian. It's begun. The fight shall have to end first. We must wait. Talking. By Geralt of Rithia, master of the witchering trade. Behold, as the last gasps of life seep from the beast. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed. Hell no. Monster's no threat. No need to kill it. A victor may always show mercy. It is his right. Long live Garrett the Merciful! Pikeman, see to the beast! Damned close to dying. I'm fine. Not hurt at all. Vivian? Smile as befits a hero and keep silent. Speech clearly paints you. She approaches. Geralt. We must talk. Vivian. You shall talk later. In the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. We knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. We are delighted, raffish, to have struck upon it. And I'm truly... Uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting your arrival. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly... That entrance, so spectacular. Your grace, Shalemars are dangerous creatures, even to knights in full plate armor. Nonsense. 
In Toussaint, knights have battled beasts for mere glory since time immemorial. True. Guillaume suffered a few bumps, scars, and bruises, but in return gained eternal glory as he who slew the monster. Mm -hmm. What about the crowd? Say the Shalemar had vaulted into the stands. Would have been a massacre. Geralt, though we value your fortuitous intervention in the arena, we would remind you your services have been retained. And as shall soon become clear, you will be generously compensated for completing another task altogether. Your Grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally, but not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival. But whatever could he be? Come, we must find him. Tell us, have you come alone? Or did Viscount Julian accompany you? Wish to see Dandelion, Your Grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. <sighs> yes. But solely to tell him we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. If we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower till he rotted. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. Ah, the very man we would entrust with these tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. Your Grace, Witcher. Greetings. Sorry to have to tell you. But the guardsmen handling the last victim's body. I know already. The creature in the cellar of Corfo Bianco. Was it the beast? No. A Bruxa. A kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you mean to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him attentively. I mean, I didn't send you it. You guys suck at your job. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place. That's what I could use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it Sir Delatour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Secondly, you should know I spoke against summoning you here. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble, or thus far have, always. And we've enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own, without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employ some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it, nonetheless, let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? Not quite, Your Grace. Law of surprise? It's something we invoke at times, but rarely. Usually we just take gold. Disappointing. This law sounds rather romantic. On the other hand, on returning to the palace, we would likely find impatient petitioners or a set of sample fabrics for a new dress. Poor rewards, both. I fear you'd not have much use for any of the surprises we are likely to come upon. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and a sum of coin. You will doubtless consider this adequate. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. But I, Corvo Bianco, isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it now? The Chancellery has bungled things again, we fear. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a Witcher. What's more, 
Nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a grim legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crispy was the first to die. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old, hung up his sword, and took to winemaking. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. We did not grant it. We could not. Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How'd he die? Where'd they find the body? Quite unusual, the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast-goers noticed he was missing. The town watch found him an hour later. On his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, meaning someone posed it. So it seems. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city, there are certain nooks. No one reasonable ventures there after dark. Ramon Dulac's corpse was found in one such place. With the first murder, terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew wary, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned... cut purses. Criminals fear the beast? Telling in a way. Take it you've excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, an amateur? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon Dulac. The wound was deep, clean. His body was found in the gutter, dressed in nightshirt and cap. A pillow placed under his head, and his sword replaced by a bed warmer. Ramon Dulac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. Dulac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld, but no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So, the first two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times, knights face new challenges, enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalric virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the grain trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stinchi. Found a coin pouch on his body. Contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the Empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Lots of similarities between the victims. All the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, has some meaning to convey. These were honorable men. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Ever considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if Knights the... of Toussaint swear fealty to what virtues exactly? Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor and compassion. Five virtues. Why are they so important to your knights? Strange question. Your grace, forgive me. I'm a foreigner trying to understand another land's customs. You are forgiven. According to legend, the virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us by the Lady of the Lake. How we truly came to espouse them, none remember. In Toussaint, we believe men of low birth should be simple-hearted and obedient. We expect much more, however, of our knights. They are to be soldiers and courtiers, lords and servants. Thus, the need for clear moral guidelines. At the time of his dubbing, a knight vows to demonstrate throughout his life honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Beast seems to be pointing up moral decay, denouncing it. Victims were all humiliated. 
might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor compromised by the pillory. Wisdom by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down a throat. It seems to fit true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next murder will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunts shall begin there shortly. Have you heard of the custom? Milton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances. A knight advanced in years. The famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew Delacroix. Told me so down by the river. Damien! To me something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren, Crespi, Delacroix and Delac formed the knightly team. It was years ago, but... They were a team? They were close friends, tightly knit, and as such earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. Beast must know it too. It's a lead, I'm sure. Your Grace, we need to find Milton immediately. Rather problematic. You see, the garden entertainments are due to start, and he's disguised as the hare, hiding somewhere, waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him. The hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret. We must call off the game at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Damien, order the garden searched immediately, but discreetly. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike sooner. And you, Witcher, follow me. My gardens, my knight, I shall take the fall. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it. Not near my palace. Horses? Ready our horses! Your Grace! <laughs> What the hell? Why I should Your Highness, I mind it doesn't get wrinkled. at home in a saddle. Long may she live! This way! Through town! Try not to lose your way! Sharp right! Take care! Good! Duchess! I just want to see her just mow someone down with her horse. Clear the path! Clear the way, I said! If this part of the game... The fame Geralt of Rivia. It's here! Just round the corner! Hurry! We must go to where the game is being held. The participants must find the unicorn's horn, a golden fish, and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hare, Milton, hides. Mean we need to find those things too. We've no other option, but time is of the essence, so we shall have to break the rules.
second thought, through here. I shall show you where the hunt plays out. Then we will split up. You will get hold of the unicorn horn and the golden fish. While I nab the phoenix egg. That will be quickest. Golden fish. Do I need a rod or a net? Please, Gap. It's not a real fish. Look there. Towards the water. See the lights? The hunters are trying to hook the fish from boats. You must simply dive in and find it. The unicorn. How do I catch it? It's terribly skittish, true, but I'm sure you will find a way to earn its trust. It turns around, over there, look! The Colton fish and the horn both contain things or clues that will help us find Milton. Once you have fish and horn, find me among the other Phoenix egg hunters. All clear? Then let's get to it. I was legit about to just jump down there. That would have killed me. Fiorano of the 1290 vintage. I do Alright, let's go ride. get the unicorn horn. I was about to say unicorn corn. I'm like, I don't think unicorns have corn. Speaking of corn, I had cream corn yesterday. It was delicious. But this is no true unicorn. Perhaps an apple will work. Or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister. Were you still a virgin? Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, or you'll spook the beast. We shall try this week. Hey, folks. Gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? Use your witcher system to find those sweets. Roach likes carrots. Maybe unicorn will too. This is an outrage. An outrage, I tell you. Roach won't it's eat bread either. Except if it's stale. Oh, we can't run. Slowly moly, holy foley. At least we are looking really good walking. This Viper armor. I'm still gonna get the Grandmaster woven, but. What would you say to a delicious crunchy carrot? Not that big. Cause I'm faster on foot. Golden fish should be easy to spot once I'm under. What the blazes? Did someone? Hey, golden fish. I've done many of diving in my time of being a witcher. I think the golden fish is like somewhere like way like in the back. I've done much diving. Definitely Skellige. Getting all those freaking swords so I can sell. So many question marks.
Hey, wait. Stop. It's important. King Cormorant Sire, accept this offering we bring. Prithee cast upon us your merciful eye and bear before us its secrets. As the moon its heavenly course doth trace, in my domain I await that moment of grace when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. A key. Why, you bomb-botched wretch! He's ruined the game! Disgraceful! <laughs> I love Garrett's flick this fish attitude. I love it. I mean, I mean, we, we're we in a bit of a rush, but still. I just love the attitude. Brings peace to our domains. Flout its writ and brought in chains. Oh, no. oh, oh, is my head ever spinning of the last night? Take good but care of yourself. Grace. No bad. If you please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. All shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. Geralt! At last. Got a key and a clue. I've another. Show me yours. Who wrote this drivel? I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. Let's see. Groan. With ease gives us green, right? And mouse with the head of hard cheese. Greenhouse? You're a genius. Several greenhouses in the gardens, indeed. But only one in the locks, the key to which looks just like the one we found. Greenhouse it is then. Let's go. I'm here. 
this belong to you, maybe? It did, but you may keep it. I've a new one. I do not know you. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxa who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? You've killed four innocent people, at least. And you? How many innocents have you cut down? I don't kill innocents. Murderers, though, you bet. I'll soon be done. I've put one left. And you, should you not stand down? And once you're done, intend to leave? Go kill somewhere else? No. I intend to live happily ever after. No! God! To stay where you were. Regenerate! I know you're in trouble. I can help. I'll help myself! No. He's my friend. Yes, Geralt. It's me. Regis? I... You all right? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... We... I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peep for, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. I'm sorry. What happened, it was my fault. Never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that expedition. No one twisted my arm. I, I forgot Ray Regis. Wasn't it the reason he... It was the fight against Vilgefortz, right? I think. Miraculous regeneration. How do you manage it? I had help. From the one you hunt. Him? How? And what have you been doing all these years? Not the time nor place for such stories. I suspect we'll get a chance to speak at ease and at length later. Now, however, we must deal with the reason that brought us both here. So you being here, it's no coincidence? Your powers of deduction seem to have waned not one bit. I'm happy. I came here for Tetlaf. I fear he's become entangled. Landed himself in serious trouble. So that's his name. He's your friend? You might call it that. Though Detlaf is... How would you humans put it? More bestial than I am. But not to worry. I'm working on him. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one night since I got here, at least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand, Detlaf is not some decadent shit who kills for sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. So in your opinion, what are his reasons? Precisely what I wish to find out. 
And then I will convince him of the error of his ways. Got a lot of faith in the guy. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You've both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to perform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to, of course. Remember the year 964? <sighs> that was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria, and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. Brute of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost two hundred, then fell to a common poacher supposedly armed with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlaf, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, a legend was born. Huh. Vampires rarely help humans. Must have had his own agenda hunting the beast. You err. He slew it for one reason alone. The monster killed a lad who once in the street had offered Detlaf an apple, expecting nothing in return. Terribly noble of him. You do not have a monopoly on altruism, my friend. Vilgefort melted my body. Detlaf found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter. Regenerated me at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. Much more than that. The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something ill is afoot. Always had an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct, his tribal propensity. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, it can only mean something's upset him immensely. Anything specific? Some set of things that'd be likely to set him off? How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men. Their world, its rules, its conventions. He's naive in a sense. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. Huh. Suggesting he's maladjusted, inventing his rage. I'm suggesting maladjustment can at times breed conflict. But is it the case this time? I cannot say, but intend to find out. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more, and all Beauclair is awash with blood. Well, we share a cause then, just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you've a contract on his head. Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I'll have convinced you Detlaf is no monster. Fine, all right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer they not find me here. I'd makeshift quarters at Mer Lachey's Long Cemetery. We'll meet there. See you. Witcher, we flew here as fast as our courses would carry us. Yet I fear we're late all the same. Pray, where is the beast? Still investigating. About to inspect this site. Withdraw your men before they trample all over the evidence. Ahem, <clears throat> sirs. We must let the Witcher do his work. Milton's murder cannot go unoffensed. allow the witcher to ply his trade <laughs> i like it that we could just like leave willy-nilly like this and they're like hey man were you supposed to be looking at the freaking thing the evidence oh god jesus this big horse 
Best cure for the beast, a witcher. All right, let's go visit Regis. Sir, sir, a letter for you, sir. Letter? Who from? Can't rightly say, sir. I was just to deliver it. Here, and thanks. No, sir. Thank you. And I truly hope I'll be of service again. My dear Geralt. I hope all is well. I imagine you hot on the trail of some nasty monster. Or is it an overly complex curse this time? Oh, Geralt, I wish I knew for certain. Whatever is keeping you busy, Perhaps you'll need a break. For those moments, I offer you this intriguing little mystery I happened on in an old manuscript I bought off a merchant from Nazaire. The tome's author claims a certain Professor Moreau, once called Beauclair Home, and this professor conducted research into Witcher mutations. I don't know much else, but I suspect that alone might pique your interest. The tome mentioned a journal interred with the scholar when he passed. It could very well lead you to his laboratory. I'm enclosing a map I found folded in the tome. It's smudged in a few places, but I hope it proves useful anyway. Please be careful and come back to me quickly. Your Triss. Hmm. A professor who studied Witcher mutations might actually be worth looking into. I'll get that later. I totally forgot about the, uh... Oh. Whatchamacallit? The, uh, the, the mission... The side quest where you find the... Bloody hell. I can't even think of the name. The, the, the white. Which I have no idea where they're located at. Ha 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 ba za ba za oh ziba zoo Lax la vie might be worth looking into I guess it's a champion <laughs> Someone oh, nice to escort not something I do often but might be worth investigating What the? Pointing this way. So it should be straight ahead. It's not even showing up. Is it? Is it not even going to show up on the map? Not even showing up on the map. Can't pull one over on me. Ah, whatever. I, I guess we're gonna have to do what we used to do, ladies and gents, back in the day. A little bit of that transition is in. The exhibition of the Reginald Dogry Monument will remain closed until further notice. Maybe I should say transition. Transition. Sorry, I kind of forgot that part. <laughs> I forget, it was like years ago, like a few years like after Blood and Wine came out. Uh what is that? Ah, uh, that stench. Anyways, I was going to say, I think it was like a few years ago after Blood and Wine came out, I was in uh, Tucson and like 
literally like freaking like a outlast finance of freddy jump scare happened when i just came across this one woman in the field wearing a hood and she turned out to be a bruxa i wasn't paying attention it was like 12 it was like midnight my time it was late at night in the game too and she freaking screamed transformed and attacked me almost one shot in my ass Outrageous. too couldn't have picked some other place to meet but that was like the scariest shit ever oh Regis. Damn it. Locked. No way I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here. Red Mutagen, you bastard. To Quinn, so I'm almost dead. God, I feel like this happened to me before, too. Fell down the hole, almost got one shotted by these things. Man, New Game Plus is no joke. cemetery how much more cliche can you get <laughs> nothing comes readily to mind could have left the door unlatched what of my privacy i value it rather deeply unmolested especially by unwanted guests that's my preferred state besides i knew you'd find a way to get in true enough need to find your friend i'm hoping you'll agree to help i shall do whatever's in my power yet what you want or even need must matter little what matters is what dead love wants if he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out, but Bruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? 
You've heard of Gobinares' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Obliterae. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Covenarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it, just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated. So, without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kobinaris gave a rather poetic name, Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Dedloff's hideout. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation. It comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here. Guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans of the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Dedloff? You're both hired vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Ah, uh, There is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guessed correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison, to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's mamoon glands, but closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. I'd rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. that a raven rather a common sight at this latitude very intelligent fowl i asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned him and his brethren perhaps they'll find one in the area and i would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would with all due respect your skills my friend it will take them some time nonetheless so perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself?
So, think you've set a nice little trap for me? Sorry. Wanna get me to confess? Gonna have to try harder. <laughs> I love a challenge. In that case, my ears are cocked. What must I do? <sighs> How about you get the ball rolling? Reveal one of your secrets. Vampires, intriguing creatures, must lead fascinating lives. Anything in particular interest you? Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbor's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, a Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back. Defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh. Seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough. But it's a conversation we'll have another time. I need to know more about you now. Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlaf, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate? Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible. As my presence proves, but, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit. But Triss helped me get it back. Actually, pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. 
We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living hire vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say, but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? Ooh. I forgot what I picked years ago when I first did this, did this walkthrough, but I think the answer would be the same. I prefer to be a witcher still. Given the world of the witcher, like, you'd rather be a witcher than anyone else, basically. Like, either be a witcher or, or someone who could do magic. I pick a witcher. Like, they're really good at sword fighting, um, and then magic. And plus, they're freaking dope. Like, let's be honest. Let's say in the world of Halo, would you rather be a Sparta or would you rather be an ODST or a Maria, a Marine? Some other effort, you'd rather be the Spartan. See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, you're determined to get an answer, to find out if I like being a Witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight. And nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much. But I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Ever vigilant even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caroberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted white. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the White survived entirely unmolested. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or, uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt, I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. <sighs> what are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse in one place. That a coincidence? 
Or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... Spoons. Spoons. Spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Well, perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its bruise. Do you imagine the white will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were going to make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. I really like rage. Oh, God, jeez. Oh, my God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, Malcolm. You are 27 years old and you just sounded like your 13 year old self. Fuck me. <laughs> I really like Regis. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, hey, can you blame me for having this voice right now? It's almost 3 in the morning where I'm at. Where I'm recording right now. Hey, we having a good time. Oh my god. Ugly armor. Alright, um... <sighs> Whites would be relics. Nope, wrong with that. Necromorphs, I guess. Let's go visit that spot at white. It's very... What the... Interrupt my rest, you asshole. Let's actually go to Cover Bianca first. Get that set up. And the game is broken. There we go. I do like it that the spotted white, that whole ordeal is tied to uh, Gontaro Dim. Uh, that freaking guy is everywhere, man. I, and I'm gonna have to like uh, listen closely to when because I don't want to kill the white we're gonna try to revert the, the curse I think I remember how to do that just in case I do have Google but I forgot the story sounds very familiar from some type of passage or like a story from a Bible or something my mom told me many years ago about greed and whatnot I, I'm totally blank on it but well, well. Okay. Does anyone have a sign? Travel pose, 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 pose. Pish posh, poshy poshy. Okay. So we can just fast travel there.
it'd be much easier. Mama says that if someone's really Man, I don't care about your mama. Sorry. Like it's three in the morning and it's hot in my room. Like, what do you want me to do? That's why I miss winter. Man, I was like stinking rich. I had my AC on like 62 degrees. All day or a day. But that electricity bill would be high. Onward to the Corvo Bianco. I don't like the fact that it seems like the, the things are like broke. At least they clean up the dead bodies. Let's get a little light in here. Welcome home, sir. I am Barnabas Basil Fauti. By order of the Duchess, I shall serve you as Major Domo of Corfo Bianco. I previously served with distinction at the Nibli family manor and in Nazaire with Admiral Rompali, who, as you are certain to know, is an extraordinary demanding gentleman. Whoa, Barnabas Basil. One thing you ought to know, I'm not your typical landed gentleman. Truth be told, this is the first real property I've ever owned. Oh, in that case, you must leave it all to me. I shall organize, see to everything, and whip the house into order. I dare say this place will soon be the most prosperous vineyard around. Great. Can already see I'm in good hands. Vineyard comes across as a place with a rich history. Know who owned it before me? Baron Rossell, who went bankrupt forcing him to sell the estate to the Duchess. The Baron, in turn, had purchased it from Monsieur Bolius of the Headsman, a truly colorful man of Ketweni origin. He was actually a Headsman? No, not him, but his great-great-great-great-grandfather. Indeed. Apparently, he was a common cut purse who somehow secured for himself the post of Ducal Headsman in Beauclair went about his work with an exceptional penchant. They say he chopped off more heads than there are grapevines in the ducal vineyards. He never hesitated, not once. Never sliced unevenly, never botched a job. For his exemplary service, the duke granted him a title and this estate. Monsieur Bolius, on the other hand, was an engineer in his younger years. Once retired, he settled here and took to producing wine. Sadly, misfortune struck and he lost his sense first of smell, then of taste. Additionally, he could not drink alcohol. His medic forbade it. Shame that. He gave up making wine? Not at all. He made even more of it. Began throwing wild balls to which he'd invite friends from far and wide in order to treat them to his wine and delight in the fact that at least someone could enjoy it. It's the sort of man he was, Monsieur Bolius. Mind giving me a little tour de Corvo Bianco? Not in the least. Follow me, please. I think it would be practical to begin on the hill. Behold, sir, your estate in all its splendor. Pretty vast. Indeed. And now, sir, allow me to show you a handful of interesting details. Follow me, please. Been a major domo all your life? Yes, I come from a long line of major domos. My father was a major domo, as was my grandfather before him, as was my great aunt. In fact, she was the one to start the tradition. Great aunt? A hard woman. It is said that already as a child, she knew where she was going, and went there. When she arrived in Beauclair, she signed on as a chambermaid at one of the vineyards, then slowly worked her way up to Major Domo. She dragged the rest of the family up the same path. Cheap shenanigans. 
I can't see a thing through these. The servants' quarters. I occupy the green home. With the Duchess's permission, I have hired a full staff. Their salaries to be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Nice of her. Not the most sightly part of the estate, I admit. But I think it's worthwhile for you as Master of the Domain to know where the help stays. Don't stately! My Camillac ache something fierce! <laughs> you okay, lady? You got health insurance? Baron Rossell ordered the vines in this part of the estate uprooted and olive groves planted in their place. They look beautiful, especially come spring. Don't look at all bad now, either. Drink up while you're Down below lies your vineyard where we grow a strain of Carfaneri, one of the world's oldest. Aged in oak barrels, it provides for an exquisite wine with distinct blackberry, wild cherry, plum, and cinnamon notes. Marvelous. Have to try it one of these days. She's fit to wed. Did he say cinnamon nuts? What's that? Oh no, a lot of that stuff sounds delicious. Nice well. Picturesque. Yes, though it ran dry long ago. During the raucous feasts Master Bolius held, he would order it filled with wine. There's a tale about a guest attending a Bolius ball for the first time and thus unaware of the custom. He had suffered great heartbreaks and had decided to end his life by jumping into the well. The festivities were coming to a close. And the well was nearly empty when the suicidal guest finally jumped. Instead of killing himself, he merely broke his legs. To numb the pain, he drank the wine. Drank himself to death? N not at all. When found the next day, he had concluded he'd witnessed twin miracles. The water had been changed into wine, and he had survived. He retired to a monastery in the Dragon Mountains and began preaching the wisdoms of Lebiola. Monsieur Bolius's wife Nina kept a garden here. A supremely lovely place it was. Bit neglected now. I agree. Yet nothing stands in the way of restoring it to its former glory and once again planting it with herbs and other vegetation. Oh boy, just said you need just say you need some funds to do it. Madame Nina planted diminutive delicate flowers and herbs here. One might say their aroma still hangs in the air. You're quite the romantic, Barnabas Basil. This served as an additional wine cellar in years of plentiful harvests. Hmm. Bit of work and it'll make a fine stable for Roach. Got your back like a butt crack, buddy. Never ever trust a woman, remember that? Ooh. Mother ever get back to work. Or your ass is fine. Cellars, voila. During Monsieur Bolis's time, wine was kept here, but Baron Rossell used it to store olive oil as well. I took the liberty of cleaning up the uh, mess, which... I made while fighting the Bruxa. Thanks, Barnabas Basil. Appreciate it. A man who dare not down some red... Is the view up there is beautiful. As you can see, the facade is, how to put it, slightly stained. But one cannot deny it a certain subtle southern charm. True, though it could use a bit of subtle paint. 
Follow me, please. Yes, I should. If I only could, I truly would. And welcome inside. On the left is the master bedroom. On the right, the dining hall and kitchen. Upstairs, you shall find the guest room, currently used for storage. Not a bad idea. At the moment, the house is only minimally furnished. Yet I believe we will, together, devise some innovative arrangements. A few paintings, for instance, would breathe new life into the abode immediately. With that, sir, you've seen the full lay of the land. Corfo Bianco is a beautiful estate. Though one must admit, time has taken its toll. If, forgive me for being forward, but if you were to choose to invest a small sum towards its beautification, consider me at your service on the matter. I think I'll take you up on that. Be sure to come and see you if I decide to do any remodeling. Mentioned the place could stand to be spruced up. Almost decidedly, sir. The question is where you would like to begin this rejuvenation. Been thinking about the outer walls. Maybe a fresh coat of paint or some patching. If I might dare to make a suggestion, why not start with a general renovation? I once oversaw such work at Admiral Rompelli's summer residence. The effects were simply breathtaking. Not only did the residence positively sparkle afterwards, but we also made room to display the Admiral's armor and weapons, of which he was a passionate collector. Here we go. It's in your hands then. Make the place shine. I shall get to work immediately. Within a day's passing, I shall have sent for the crew which rebuffed the Admiral's residence. They are the finest specialists around. Highly skilled at what they do, it shall not take them too long, I wager. Two days after they begin, your eyes will behold your residence in its refurbished, rejuvenated, beautified state. Is there anything, anything else you require, sir? Feels like by... I agree, yet I would urge you to hold off on further construction got these spacious grounds, mm, but maybe it's time to make them more uh, useful. Oh yes, we certainly should. The way I see things, given your trade, sir, you would be wise to put in a grindstone and an armorous table. A good way to start things off, don't you think? I trade, my blades get dull pretty quick. Could use a grindstone, professional grade. Of course. No one would consider that an unnecessary extravagance, I would wager. Then send out for one, please. A high quality stone to be set up in the yard. Of course. I shall send a runner to town at once. I believe you shall be grinding to your heart's content by tomorrow. Will you be needing anything else, sir? My armor needs work from time to time. You know, oil this, reinforce that. Could use a decent work table where I could do all that. Admiral Rompali once hired a specialist who made the finest armorer's tables this side of the Yeruga. I will contact him at once. Good. Order me up a table like that. Immediately, sir. I expect it will take at most one day to arrive. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Know what? Changed my mind. Not in the mood to talk about redecoration today. But I wanted to ask you something else. I shall be glad to answer your every question, sir. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Let's see, we have to wait three days for the general refurbishment to finish. It's about four days. I smell a transition. Yeah, boy, yeah. Mm. 
Looking good, looking good. Renovations coming along all right, Barnabas Basil? Superbly, sir. General refurbishment has been completed. And I took the liberty of adding two racks, each upon which you might hang weapons and armor, if you've some pieces you'd like to display. Likewise, I have prepared a few spots in which new paintings might be hung. In Uffa News, the laborers dusting out the cellar have made a most unusual discovery. I believe it's something you'll wish to see. If you say I should see it, I'll go see it right now, BB. Oh, BB. Missed it one time. All these freaking green mutagens, man. All right, let's continue to upgrade the vineyard. Sorry about that, those weird transitions. Power went out. They're so heroic. We but have to all is okay. BB, know anything about the laboratory in the cellar? One of the previous owners taken interest in alchemy? A laboratory? Alchemy? I know nothing of it. But I understand that to a witcher this must be a very intriguing fight. It is. It was walled up. The equipment's pretty ancient too, so it must have belonged to someone who lived at Corvo Bianco before you started working here. Whoever it was sure knew their stuff though. Got dragon glass vials and flasks, stills, sublimators, vengerometers. Forgive me, sir, but I fear I don't follow. Just saying, it's top-notch equipment. True masterpieces of craftsmanship for use in alchemy. Brewing a concoction with this stuff versus doing it over an open fire? Well, there's no comparison. Then I am all the more delighted you discovered it, sir. Starting to really like this place. Maybe we should keep going, refurbish some more. What do you think, BB? As you wish, sir. Shall we see to the house or the grounds this time? Starting to get into this whole renovating thing. There must be other things we can improve. What a splendidly wise idea. Now that the general refurbishment is done, why not see to the grounds? Perhaps renovate the stables? Or return Madame Bolius's garden to its former verdancy? You know, Roach, my horse? Well, we've been through a lot together. And since I've finally got a decent place to stay, I think she deserves one too. Oh, a sturdy stable testifies to a most honorable owner. Just say the word, and I'll have them start working on it at once. My Roach deserves the best. Have them refurbish the stables. I shall get to work at once. Yet finding workmen and completing construction takes time. Though likely no more than two days. Will you be needing anything else, sir? So, sometimes I have to brew a potion, but I can't find the herbs I need growing anywhere nearby. Well, you're in luck, sir. The flower garden, once kept by Madame Nina, Monsieur Bolius's wife, seems the ideal place to cultivate herbs. In fact, it's roomy enough to plant shrubbery. Good idea, Barnabas Basil. 
Herbs there will save me hours of painstaking searching and harvesting. The idea is yours, sir. I am but the humble executor of your will. I believe we shall have sown the first seeds in two days' time. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Feels like by investing a bit of coin I could make the house more functional. Indeed, momentum is best maintained once established. Now that we've finished the general renovations, you might begin to consider such things as a new bed, or additional armor stands, or weapon racks. Also, some new furnishings, and a fresh coat of paint on the walls would do much to improve the guest quarters. Thinking about buying a comfortable bed. Always wanted one. Excellent idea. In your profession, rest is supremely important. But say the word, and I shall order you a bed from the carpenters who craft comfort for the court. Great. Order me a fine bed, please. Think I deserve one at my age. True indeed, true indeed. I shall send a runner at once. The bet will be in place by this time tomorrow. Is there anything, anything else you require, sir? Could use another weapon rack. Got some interesting pieces I'd like to display. I know of a carpentry shop in town which crafts the humblest lumber into true masterpieces. You need but give the word. Fine. What are the racks? Of course, at once. At most one day for them to arrive, is my estimation. Is there anything... Any Along the path, I've often picked up well-crafted, beautifully ornamented armor. Some of those pieces would look great on display here. I agree. It would lend the place a certain witch's air. Shall I order new stands at once, sir? Yes. Just please make sure they're solidly made and nicely finished. It goes without saying, sir. There is nothing worse than splendid armor upon a subpar stand. By this time tomorrow, they shall be ready to display your finest finds. Is there anything... Was wondering about the guest room. Not that I'm expecting company, but... Oh, but that is immaterial. All self-respecting homes should boast a comfortable guest room. What if someone were to drop by unannounced? Yeah. The sooner we start on that, the better. I can tell a man of action immediately. I'll see to it myself. The room shall be ready in two days, in my opinion. Is there anything... anything else you require, sir? That's all for now, BB. Thanks. Whew. That was a lot. Chew. Yep, yep. Oh. I keep forgetting how you're supposed to look at notifications on PlayStation. Uh these are all available options for development Corvo Bianco. Only 56% of people only got that? Come on, guys. Renovations coming along all right. I am delighted to inform you we have completed our labors. You can now devote yourself to enjoying the vineyard's delights to the fullest. You must forgive me my temerity, sir, but I thought with all the work on Corfo Bianco completed and with the estate looking more beautiful than ever, it might be appropriate to commemorate the moment. Sure, why not? During the tidying that preceded the renovations, I came across a bottle of Sepramento, the 1250 vintage. I cannot say by what miracle it survived, but it is here, and we've course to open it today. And then he ran straight into the crowd, burning bouquet in hand. All thought it a part of the performance, so they only laughed even when the decor began to catch fire. It was not until the flames engulfed Baron Mahefkin's beard that folk began to realize something was amiss and went to put out the fires. <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Bolius and Madame Nina threw some first-rate balls here. It was so. 
In this regard, Baron Rossell was decidedly more reserved. So tell me, Barnabas Basil, what's the wine situation like here? Am I going to produce any this year? This year is out, I fear, sir. Last autumn, a fungus destroyed all the vines. Baron Rossell had new ones planted, but it will be some time before they start bearing fruit. Assuming that is, the fungus does not reappear. Mm, that'd be bad. This sepramento got me dreaming. It's amazing. Isn't it, though? Allow me to top you off, sir. There. Thanks. No place like home. Well worth it. All right, now let's get back to getting that white. Uh, and what do you get for all that work? A crook in your back, one so on in I've years. lots to do uh. before. It I can't see a thing through these cataracts. God, I keep forgetting that the map is like broken for some odd reason. I mean, we don't have that many signposts to travel to, so... Alright, we're close. We got all these fog links here. Bar guests. Never a good omen. Show me what you got. Run away, Roach. Ghost puppies are everywhere. We just says Raven wasn't lying. Ghost puppies. Those puppies almost killed me. Strange. Get a sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm. A message. Trying to tell me something. No, 
none shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. Spoons everywhere. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. Spoon, pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Woman's name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It makes sense. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. And this is something else. Lock, we can't go in it. That's the back way. Uh, another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Oh, I didn't even see this. does seem like a white slayer. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Cauldron I was looking for. White's not particularly tidy. It's all back here. Thousands of them here. White's been a collector for years. The 
can't say this is the other way that we could get to. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse, and it's been trying desperately to lift it. White's obsessed, a real collector, thoroughbred. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Try to lift the curse. Plus he was pulling on the wrong sword. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. in the mirror. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons.
think it worked. Just not quite like I expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Won't be hard to find given its stench. Oh, there's that. Someplace safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Tasty. Mm, so mm, wonderful. Thank you. No problem, homegirl. Gaunter O Dim, you bastard. 
Now I forget if the, the big beggar was Gonter Odem, just being a total asshole, or was did the beggar go to Gonter Odem to place a curse on her? Either way, it was effed up. But that just goes to show that Master Mirror's been around for centuries or millennia. He is the conjunction of spheres. I did pass right by him. Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our codex commands. Raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Pretty helpful creatures, calling them often. I try not to overdo it, but they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement. But, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right, so what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesha Mudna. What's it like? It is a place of torment, a torture chamber. Long ago, shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us, seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Tesha Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage. Sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. See no reason to dawdle. 
Tesham Mutna. Take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the Raven did me. I've also taken some Sancurium. A solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's spinning already, and you're... You're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me. We have arrived. The sacrificial chamber of torture and torment lies underground. Sure you know what you're doing? I can only hope I do. Please, let's go. The longer we delay, the less control I shall have of my faculties. I'd really prefer not to hurt you. You lead. Skurvers must be getting close to their feeding ground. Correct. I told you there'd be danger. <sighs> Beyond this wall lies an ancient vampire dungeon. Seen a lot of things in my time. Nothing quite like this, though. My, I feel honored. A man with such a wealth of experience, yet I'm about to show him something new. Now, to open it. How the hell? It's an ancient form of protection against unwanted guests. The mechanism which releases the latch reacts only to a higher vampire's blood. Tricky mechanisms, a vampire hideout. Fortified, secured. Must have been important to your species once. Toussaint. It shall always be so. During the conjunction, the gate from our world into this one opened upon this land and no other. This was the fireplace we saw. Yep. Guess I gotta equip that witch, I'm gonna call it now. Straw back. This place. There's evil here. Death hangs in the air. Yes. A great many beings have breathed their last here. The death hangs. Yeah, we're skeletons hanging here. And I think death does hang. Glyphs are carved into the rock. Coated with blood used to be. They mean something? They're emblems. Symbols of... Uh, well, what you would call tribes. Dispersed throughout the world after the conjunction. My ancestors placed them here to remind us of where we came from. Seems your kind assembled a peculiar little library. Indeed, though I personally did not lay a hand to it. Cells? Who for? Ah, disgraceful. Excruciatingly so with this particular page from my history. I'd rather not summon the demons of the past if it's all right with you. Who's is this cliff? Amarun. They ventured beyond the sea. And this one? Which tribe's this? Garisham. My tribe, and Detlaf's. We both remained in this part of the world. Who 
coast is this cliff? I'm a runner. They ventured beyond the sea. I don't like that noise. Charming place, but what are all those cages for? Mentioned one vampire being kept here. Yes, well, you see, humanitarians is something my ancestors were not. They concluded Kagmar would best be punished if he were tormented with the scent of blood he could not taste. Thus, they also kept humans here. Humans whose blood they slowly let. Kagmar ranted and raged in pain as those... Those humans slowly bled to death. They treated them like livestock, live bait. I'd like to be able to turn back time, deny it, but alas, I can do neither. Feel shame for my brethren. That is all I can do. Don't take it so hard. Nothing you could have done about it. Let's get to work. Well, that was awkward. Fine. I prepared the bait. Please be so kind and place it, ideally at the tunnel entrances. The sun will spread most effectively then. Place the bait at the tunnel entrances. Monsters will catch its scent more quickly. When I think how these tunnels got here, scent shivers. It was the natural order of things. The place reeked of death and it attracted necrophages. I really don't appreciate the noise that that the Three place done. is making. One left. Think this will work? I certainly hope so. Meat stench is so thick, I'm wagering carries clear to moving ground. This'll hold. Doesn't look like anything special. I told you, Kagmar thrashed about inside it for over two centuries. Appearances can be deceiving. Bait set. But now, I shall enter the cage. You must chain me inside. The bars are made of an alloy that will prevent me from transforming into mist. Kind of thought you wouldn't want to. I shall be in great pain. My sole thought being to stop that pain. I cannot know what I will do. We must hurry. The beasts have caught the scent also my head. I started spinning. That the blood? Uh, someone who's never experienced a vampire's bloodlust does not know the true meaning of thirst. Something you'll say when you can't take it anymore. And what did you do once I uttered it? Don't know. Calm you down. Somehow. Please, God. You won't be able to. We must go through this. That is all. We just smell the blood. Come on. Oh, 
Hold on, I'll let you out. it in this state. Tell me how. I'll help you. Any better? Far from ideal. And some time must pass before I fully recover. But yes, a bit better. Thank you. Never expected it to be like that. You didn't tell me. We need not discuss it. But we do. Because if I'd known you were going to subject yourself to torture... What would you have done? Found Dedloff some other way. I did not wish you to use any other way. Did that occur to you? No. Because I thought no being would ever willingly subject itself to that kind of pain. You vampires aren't any different from us in that regard. I told you. The pain is my way of paying my debt. The enormous debt I owe Dedloff. If I had to do it again, I would, in a heartbeat. Resonance, it's ready. Are you certain you followed the formula? The proportions were exact, the brewing time precise. This is important, Geralt. The slightest deviation could cost even a witch of dearly. Relax. Got some experience brewing potions. Very well. In that case, let's begin. You were next. Please, take a seat. This gentleman was here first. Step down or you shall regret it. Ah, <laughs> fails to realize he was your friend, Count. It was then I ordered him to give up his seat and step off the step. If only you'd seen his face. We got him good, didn't we, Detlap? And then Mother insisted we buy the mill. <laughs> Curious, eh?
But at least I have a yarn to spin for friends and associates. Forgive me. What? <laughs> Awake at last. You ride like a squirrel caught in a snare. I'd begun to fear they were death throes, that you'd departed. <clears throat> uh, uh, sure wasn't pleasant, but it worked. What did you see? Delacroix. His death did not come easy. Seems Dedlaff had made friends with him, still killed him, chopped up his corpse. And he was overcome with fury, remorse, cut off the hand that had committed the murder. Hmm, interesting. And entirely unlike the Detlef I know. See anything else? Saw a moment. Delacroix did something selfless, was kind to Detlef. Guess it could have been the start of their friendship. Why the uncertainty? Nothing extraordinary about it. Normal, everyday situation, really. Visions were supposed to issue from strong emotions. Clearly, the situation provoked such emotions in Detlaf. Keep in mind, he did later murder Delacroix. Killing someone who's grown dear to us, it's bound to elicit strong emotion. Vampires are no different in that regard. Did you see anything else? There was something. Showed up twice in the vision. A boot black stand. Dedlaf first met Delacroix there. Went back after the murder, actually. Peculiar. Stand was somewhere in the port district. And the boot black acted as if he knew Dedlaf. Hmm. That would be even odder. Perhaps we should have a chat with the lad. Though I would expect no breakthroughs. It's our only lead. I'll go talk to him. Coming with. I shall join you later if it's no trouble. I don't yet feel strong enough to venture out. That's fair. Rest up. Be back as soon as I learn anything. World children toil twice, waste away. Alrighty, ladies and gents, this is a great place to stop. Thank you all for watching this. If you guys can please leave a like on this video, if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe for more content. It helps out this channel a lot. Also, when you do subscribe, make sure you hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any content I post on this channel. Uh, please share my channel and my videos to all your friends, families, cats, and dogs, and whoever who not. And you guys can all follow me on Twitter at beta b a y t u h if you want to keep supporting me even further than just subscribing to my youtube channel leave it a like share my channel and my videos to all your friends and families please consider donating some of your extra money so you're lying around to my patreon and or paypal and or through other donation links i have in the descriptions like oh, excuse me jesus like uh, uh donate via tip or becoming a youtube member um that is patreon.com slash beta B A Y T U H and or PayPal.me slash beta B A Y T U H and or I totally forgot to add this through YouTube Super Thanks. All you have to do is click on any one of my videos that are monetized, which is 99.9% .9 of them. Hit that little money heart thanks button, donate however much you want. Any and all donations, ladies and gents, are much appreciated and is 100% completely optional. Rather, you're donating via tip, Patreon, PayPal, or become a YouTube membership. Um, and yeah, with all that being said, I will see you guys later. Where's the exit out of this place? Oh, I passed by it twice. I was like, dude, where do I go? Free at last.